River tables are the big rage right now. Uh, I'd like to build a sulk table using that technique for my home. When we were building this river table and we were filming, I had all kinds of questions for Kim. Uh, I've never used epoxy. I've never used epoxy. So I definitely had a bunch of questions for him and kept him busy answering them. So we thought maybe it might be interesting to just pose some of those questions back to him and have him answer them and maybe you'll find some, a little bit of additional information for you as you go forward and perhaps uh, making your own river table. So one of the first questions I had for him was, what is the difference between epoxy and epoxy, since I've never used either one? I think that's a great question because the epoxy that we ended up using is completely different than standard epoxies that you would use to glue projects up with. So let's dive into that. So a standard epoxy that, glue, that you would use to glue up projects with um, is similar to this type of epoxy in the way that it's a two-part system. So you have a resin and a hardener and you mix those together and once those are mixed together, then there's a chemical reaction that happens that allows the epoxy to cure. So in that regard, the two epoxies are very similar. The difference is, is that the standard epoxy is really designed more for gluing projects up versus this, where it's designed for doing something like a river table. This type of epoxy, um, once you mix it up, it typically has about a working time of maybe 30 minutes to an hour before it starts really starting to set up. It doesn't set up for about a full 24 hours for a full cure, but when you mix it, this type of, of, of epoxy actually generates quite a bit of heat. So you can't really mix it in thick quantities like you would with a river table. As opposed to that, this flow cast from Ecopoxy um, takes a full three days to cure. So the curing process is much, much longer with flow cast. And as a result of that, it stays much cooler. So that allows you to pour, they say, up to one and a half inches thick. But if you're gonna use this kind of epoxy, um, probably no more than a, maybe a quarter inch to a half inch in thickness and pour. The other main difference too is that um, the hardener for this type of epoxy actually has a little bit of a color to it, so it's not very clear. It's clear, but it has a little bit of a kind of a tan tint to it. Ecopoxy is completely clear, and that's a great starting point for when you're going to add all those additives. So the Ecopoxy, you can pour deeper. Yep. The West Epoxy, can I can I get blue color for that? Does it use You can definitely too? use all the pigments and the different additives um, with this type of epoxy. So the other thing I guess I'd be wondering is is the epoxy seem to not bubble as much? Is Correct. that a problem with West epoxy or in a, just a regular epoxy? Well, since this takes a lot longer to cure, that allows those bubbles to rise to the surface um, before that chemical reaction starts happening. So with this, you're gonna probably get encapsulated bubbles much more than what you would with this. So I've seen uh, videos where they take a torch to, right. and they'll heat that. Do you, do we need to do that with an epoxy or? Well, when we poured ours, um, we did have a heat gun on hand because I thought we were going to have to use it to get some of those air bubbles out. So we poured it. Um, we poured it in the morning, so we kind of had all day to watch it and see what happens. Um, throughout the first two or three hours, um, all those bubbles had come up to the top of the surface and pretty much disappeared. So we opted not to use the heat gun. If you feel like that those air bubbles aren't gonna um, come up out of the surface, then you do need to use the heat gun to kind of accelerate that process. Mm -hmm.
One of the uh, viewer questions we had, which was a question of mine, and I know I picked on him quite a bit while we were doing this, is that stirring the eco epoxy, it takes a while. And it seems to me, it's according to you, it's something that you don't want to skimp on. That's right. When you use epoxy, you want to make sure and mix up those two parts, both the hardener and the resin. Because if you don't mix them thoroughly enough, then it's not going to cure properly. So it's almost better to overmix it, so to speak. Now, a lot of it depends on the size of the container and how much epoxy that you're mixing up. For example, if you're mixing epoxy in a small container, um, it's much easier to mix it. You can mix it faster and it's, you know, from a volume standpoint, there's not near as much to mix up. Now the container that we had was relatively large, so there was a lot of epoxy to mix up. So you just really want to stir it good and almost over mix it a little bit just to make sure that those two components thoroughly mix together. So if it says five minutes, you should be mixing for five minutes. Well, hearing. and it's not really any set time. Um, it just depends on if you feel like you've basically mixed it up good enough. And Now there are a couple other little tips that we can talk about um, when you are mixing it. You'll notice that in our video we used a paint stick, a paint stirring stick, to mix it up. So anytime you mix epoxy, you should use some sort of a flat stick. And if at all possible, make sure that your container has a flat bottom as well. Because what you want to do is after you've mixed it up really well, you want to kind of scrape around those outside edges and make sure that you're integrating any leftover resin or hardener into the whole mix. And even on the bottom of the container, do your best to just scrape that up and make sure that it all gets mixed thoroughly. Another option is if you're using um, an even larger container, like say for a bigger river table, um, you can get those attachments for a drill, like what they use for like drywall mud and stuff like that. Okay. And that'll really speed up that process. So I would recommend anything bigger than what we did with this particular table say a dining table or something like that where you're mixing it in a five gallon bucket you're definitely going to want to get one of those attachments so another thing i noticed uh, when we were doing this and we actually talked about it is you know we had poured some of that epoxy into a like a pint container, a couple of pint containers. Right, right. To, we wanted to do some sort of uh, color sampling just to see what color we might get. Mm -hmm. And we noticed that it seemed a little different when we were pouring into a little pint container versus when we did that quart container, which was what we were going to actually use. It seemed like the blues were a little bit different. You want to elaborate on that just a little bit? Yeah, that was kind of an eye-opener for both of us, and we really kind of wondered, well, what's going to happen when we actually pour it into the mold? And uh, the best thing that I can kind of sum all that up in is that um, those smaller containers, the epoxy was just reacting a little differently um, when we mixed in the metallic and the dye. It almost sort of had kind of this boiling kind of look a little bit. Um, which concerned us when we first mixed it up. So we did use the larger container, which had more volume right. for one of the samples. And it kind of smoothed out and leveled out much more than the little container did. So depending on the size of the area that you're going to pour for your river table, definitely is going to affect kind of how that epoxy um, ends up looking in the end. Now, with that being said, you know, when we did pour that epoxy in here, um, you know, we added the little white drops and we actually did pour through the middle with some clear epoxy that just had metallic only in it. That really changed the look of it after we, you know, did those two things. Yes, it did. But after coming back two or three hours later, it had transformed again. It looked completely different, well, not completely different, but it definitely looked different than when we poured it that first hour. By time the first day went by, 
it had pretty much solidified and it didn't change much. And even though it wasn't exactly what we thought we were gonna get, uh, it really came out pretty nice. So when you go to pour this and um, it changes, um, you just kind of have to be okay with that thing morphing into its own little uh, river in, in our case. And uh, it, I think it really came out pretty good either way, so. Just be happy with the changes. That's right, yep. All right.